I'm your host, Simone Henry. Today, we're talking about who are fans and why do you need them? On SJ Music TV, we endeavor to provide tips, tools, and resources, techniques and resources to help you grow your ministry. And endeavoring to do that, we have to talk about fans and building a fan base. And uh, so in that, for a lot of people, when we say, well, you need to build your fan base, a lot of times they think about the people that wait outside of a concert hall for two days, sleeping on, sleeping on the sidewalk, waiting for the doors to open or waiting to get the first tickets. Yeah, those are fans. But also, fans are the people that you build relationships with, who you want to buy your music, spread the word about you and your ministry. They are the people that you want to come to your concerts and your events. The, they are their people. They're the people that you want to uh, spread the word about you. Um, they're not just, they're not just the, the screaming teenage girls that you see at some concerts and those kinds of things. So fans, fans are very important at every level of your music ministry, whether you are a household name or not. If you were to record, do a live recording, and then go into the studio and do overdubs and um, do all the rest of the polishing and the mixing, the mastering and everything, you put it together and at the end of that whole process, you, you uh, put together the CD and you press the CDs and you're ready to sell them. At the end of that process, when you look back at what you spent and say you spent $30,000 and you want to sell your CDs for $10, you need to now sell 3,000 CDs in order to break even. Well, who are you going to sell those CDs to? Who is coming to watch you perform those same songs again? Those people are your fans. So fans are very important because they are, they are the people that you're building relationships with around your music and your ministry. As an independent artist, think of this relationship with your fans as, as a dating relationship, right? There are some music artists out there who are already married to their audience. Take, take an artist like Beyonce, right? She knows her audience, her audience knows her, right? They even have cute nicknames for each other. They call each other Queen Bay and, and Bayhive and Beehive and things like that. Well, you're probably not at that point yet. You're probably at the point where your fans are still feeling you out. They're still trying to get to know you. I heard a statistic the other day that said, your, it takes 100 hours of time spent with somebody to to be friends with that person well if that's the case if that's what it takes to become a friend how many hours does it take to have a relationship with a fan maybe a little bit more maybe a little bit less but the bottom line is if you're building a relationship with somebody just like if you were dating them you spend time with each other you hang out, you talk to each other, you talk on the phone, you text back and forth. So that's what, that's the, that's the building blocks really of building a fan base. It's, you're building a relationship with a group of people. You're letting them see who you are and you're letting, and you're letting them into your world and you're coming into their world, right? And so as you're, as you're building this relationship with them, you're letting them see your journey in making your music, writing your songs, um, going out on the road. You're letting them know why you're so passionate about your mission, why you're, why you're in this, why you're doing this whole gospel music thing. You know, what, what brought you to this point? 
what makes you sit down and write the songs? What makes you spend all that money to record a project? Your fans need to know that about you in order to have the kind of response to you that will draw them in to make them want to want to spend even more time with you. Make them want to come to your concerts and buy your music and your merch and whatever it is you're selling. Um, and make them want to check out the things they, that you want them to check out, right? So your fans are these people that you're building a relationship with that eventually you want them to become your customers. So then these customers are the people who buy your music, they buy your merch. So nowadays, in the days of streaming and downloading, music isn't, isn't, doesn't have the same value monetarily that it, that it used to have. So now we have to come up with other ways in order to make money, in order to sustain our ministry. So then we also sell merch and we also put on shows and live events and get get people out to see you in person and also do online shows. I know there are there are some platforms out there that allow you to do online shows on a regular basis. You can even do a virtual tip jar and have those people who love you and want to come see you if they they can't come to your city or you're doing a show online. Um but they can, they can still support your ministry with, with a virtual tip jar. Um, these fans are also the people that spread the word about you to their friends and their family. Uh, I'm gonna tell you about an event I had yesterday. Yesterday at my house, I had my sister and some friends over for lunch and my mom was there as well. And because, because we're music fans, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't always a music industry professional, a music industry entrepreneur. Before I decided to jump, decided to jump into the music industry, I was a fan. I liked singing in church. I had, I was in several groups. I was in a touring group. I was in lots of choirs, praise teams. It's music and singing, uh, and just all different genres of music have just have been a part of my life since I was. I don't know, seven, probably. That's when I joined the, uh, the children's choir at Breath of Life Church. So my sister and I, ever since then, you know, we've been big music fans. So yesterday we're at my house and I am, I went to a concert a couple weeks ago and I bought, I bought a CD and I've been listening to it in the car all week. And I came across this song that even though I had I had, had that CD before, I never really paid attention to the song and it just kind of hit me, it really spoke to me. And so yesterday, I you know pulled it up on my phone and I had to have my sister listen to it. And so everybody in the room is listening to this song. So not only that, then she is sharing a song with me that she really likes. And then another person at my house is sharing a song with us that she really likes. This is what fans do, and this is what you want your fans to do. When you have a relationship with them, when they like you so much that they want to spread the word to everyone about you, um, you know, th this is what you want. So now, by me sharing, sharing this artist and this song with my sister and with my friends, now she is more aware of you as an artist. And so now when she hears your name, she's telling other people and it spreads like that. So this is why fans are incredibly important um, for, for just that reason. Um, now before we played, so we're gonna take another music break and we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk more about how do you cultivate this fan base? How do you draw these people in that you want to be able to buy your music, to come to your shows, to buy your merch, to help you sustain your ministry so that you can keep your, so that you can spread your message that much more, the, the message that God is giving you that you write in your music. Are you a Christian artist who has recorded at least a single, but not sure where to go from here? Are you looking for performance opportunities, 
but not sure where to start. Hi, I'm Simone Henry, the founder of Eshe Music, and I've set aside time in my schedule to speak specifically to your needs. Schedule a call with me now at eshemusic.com slash MMA. That's E-C-H-E music.com slash MMA. I'm looking forward to talking with you. Welcome back to Eshe Music TV. I'm your host, Simone Henry. So we talked earlier about who fans are and why it matters. Why do you need to have a fan base? So now we're going to talk about how do you cultivate a fan base? How do you build up a fan base? The prevailing wisdom is you need a thousand super fans in order to be able to uh, to do your music ministry full time. So if you have a thousand super fans and say they are each paying you a thousand a uh, hundred dollars a year, so if you're selling them enough stuff that they are paying you a hundred dollars a year, you can live on that, and you know, and that will sustain your ministry. So. How do you get to that point where you have a thousand super fans? And when I say super fans, like before I was talking about fans. Well, you know, there's there's different tiers of fans, right? When we talk about there's they're the people out there who don't really know you. They don't know about your music. Um, but they are but they are music fans. They like your style of music. They um, you know, they may be actively looking for new music. They may be, they may be even in the music industry. They may be, um, radio promoters. They may be music ministers in your local churches. They may be dance ministry choreographers in your local churches. These are people who are interested in the, the music, the kind of music that you have to offer but they don't know you. So that's the first level of fan. Then the next level are the people who know about you. So you can call them a fan. They know about you. They may stream your music every so often. They may add a song of yours to their playlist. Um, they, um, they may, you know, tag along with a friend to your show or something like that. So that's, that's the next level. The super fan level, that's the level where they, whenever they hear your name or whenever you are doing a show or you come out with a new single or a new album, they can't wait to get it. They are telling their friends all about you. They are, you know, just giddy with joy that you're coming to their town. Um, and they love it when they hear your song on the radio. They know all the words to your songs, um, and anything that you have, they're they're members of your of your fan club. You know, these are those are your super fans. So um, those are ideal, and those you want a thousand of those. Yesterday when we were at my house, and. I mentioned I mentioned an artist who I had um, brought my sister to to come see a while back. His name is Javon Inman. He's a local artist here, um, and he actually is a worship leader in a church locally in D.C. Of, of a friend of mine. And you know, I brought up his name because I was talking about another praise lead team leader that we had that we were you know that we were singing with a while back and how she is a member of his group now. And when I mentioned his name and told my sister, oh, oh yeah, you remember him, he's this person. Oh my goodness, she jumped up with joy and how she loved him so much. And you know, she, mind you, she's only seen him once. <laughs> and, but she just, she loved him immediately because, because of his presence on stage, the way he praises the Lord, the way he's such a, just, just his presence and the impression that he gave to my sister had made such an impression that she will probably remember him forever. 
and that she is now a super fan. So that's that's the kind of reaction you want when of of your fans, you know, of people who hear your name and they know they know your branding. You know, his branding is of a worshiper. He is when you think of you know, you think of, of good worship music and, you know, somebody who's really going to bring that atmosphere of, of praising the Lord and worshiping God. He gives that, he brings that kind of a presence. So that brand, that is branding. So that's what you think of when you think of Javon Inman, right? So, you know, that, so that's what came into her head when, when I said his name. Um, and it's that kind of branding that cultivates, that helps you to cultivate a fan base because you want people to have an impression in, in their heads, in their minds of you when, when they think about you. So there are some ways to cultivate a fan base, even in this age of, of social media, that's not all about social media, right? Sure, you can do video and Facebook Live, which is free, and all you have to spend is brain power coming up with a topic to talk about, maybe a cover song to sing, time to spend on it, but, um, but it's free. And, and that's something that Facebook provides, provides for you. So that's a very, it's a very easy marketing tool. And so when you're doing something like that, you wanna make sure that you have quality and consistency. So basically do it like, like I'm doing now, right? Start a show and make it a Facebook Live show when people know that you're gonna be, you're gonna be on every Friday morning at say 10 a.m. They're gonna be sure to be there waiting for you. And that consistency helps to build that relationship. That, that counts towards your 100 hours of, of making friends. Cover songs, devotionals, uh, make it fun or emotional. When you, when you evoke an emotion in someone, that bonds them to you even more. And while you're doing these Facebook Lives, make sure that you're engaging with them. When people are asking a question, answer their question or say their name, say hello to them. That, that, it, that helps to cement that relationship even more. Put your music on music discovery sites like SoundCloud, Noise Trade, or Hype, Mu Hype Machine, uh, and on other streaming sites. A lot of us are streaming music these days, so you want people to be able to find you when, when they're searching for your name. Uh, do contests and giveaways. And also do something like fan videos and bring bring your fans along when when you're writing your songs or when you're in the studio recording like i said before a lot of your fans don't know anything about how the music is made right so show them get them get them involved bring them along on the journey on the journey building your fan base isn't just about posting on facebook I had a conversation with an artist the other day and she was saying, oh, well, I don't really have time to do all this social media posting and everything. That's not all building a fan base is about. Sure, you may wanna hire somebody to do your posting, but remember, people come to social media for the connection and to be entertained. So even though you may be posting, you wanna be talking to them when they like or when they comment. You want to get in there and you want to comment back to them. You want to start a conversation, especially now with all the trouble that Facebook has been in. They're going back to more of an engagement platform than a just let's just post stuff out there platform. OK, so um, so keep those things in mind when we're when when you think about who are my fans who are the people that I want to be within my sphere of influence, who I want to be spreading my message of God's love to, who I want to be helping to facilitate their relationship with God, right? Um, so think about doing it in, in these ways. These are, that. this is what having a fan base is about, okay?
Remember to visit us online, tv.shamusic.com. If you've missed an episode, all the episodes are posted there, okay? Thank you for watching SHA Music TV. Be sure to subscribe to this channel so you never miss an episode. To receive the free gift mentioned in this episode or to have your song featured, please visit us at tv.shamusic.com.